Hello guys and welcome back to the HJW Gaming Channel and a continuation of my faction guides. In this video I'm going to be doing a faction guide for Mordor and I'll be exploring all the elements of Mordor to help you make an informed decision on your faction or to assist you in playing to their strengths. I hope you enjoy. So Mordor is an evil side faction and is one of the most popular choices in seasons 1 and 2 for a variety of reasons. The first of these reasons is that the starting commanders given to those who start as Mordor are excellent. The initial commander given is Gorbag. Gorbag is an excellent commander who primarily leads Orcish units, being able to buff both their damage and reduce damage received. His tier 10 item is also excellent and synergizes well with his Orc skills, so he's definitely worth continuing to invest in and may potentially be the best of all of the tier 1 uh, evil commanders. In addition, Mordor players who start Season 1 are also granted Khaldun during the tutorial, so you gain access to potentially the other best Tier 1 Evil Commander, so he's a very popular choice for those starting Season 1. Construction and troop-wise, Mordor begins with the Morgul Quarters, which grants access to the Mordor-based Orcish units. These Orcish units have pretty well-balanced stats with decent defence, so are pretty good for preventing too many losses in the early game. These units also synergize well with Gorbag as your starting commander. The siege granted by these units is also on par with some of the best good side uh, Dwarven siege units, so it won't prohibit you from taking keeps early on. These very balanced units help to make Mordor pretty forgiving for new players also, which again is another reason why they're so popular in Season 1. The second quarters unlocked is the Eastern Quarters, granting access to the Evil Men units, which deal a little bit more damage but still have very good balanced stats. These can also help early game, as they synergize well with Khaldun. Otherwise, to begin with, they don't offer a massive amount more than the Orcs for beginner tiles. The only real downside to this early unlock order is that you don't get access to a high DPS unit to go with your tanky units, as none of the Mordor Orcs or Evil Men do a huge amount of damage. You have to wait until the third quarters unlock, the northern quarters, for both the Arbalest ranged unit and the Reaper melee unit before you can inflict some serious damage. Additionally, your siege compared to other evil sides will not be as strong, as you do not unlock the Uruk quarters and therefore the Alchemist siege units until last. The unique tier 4 unit of Mordor is the Ravager. This unit functions similar as like a miniature version of the Moomakill, with one of its skills making the Ravager capable of hitting all of the opponent's units at once. This therefore makes it most effective against armies with three unit compositions, as it can deal triple the damage. The Ravager's other skill is Large Unit, which can reduce the physical damage taken. Though those skills initially look good, once you scratch beneath the surface, you really start to see the flaws of the Ravager. Firstly, as a troll unit, the Ravager is extremely slow, with speed of only 40, which is some of the lowest, uh, slowest units in the game. So your marches will take a lot longer than most other armies. In addition, these skills do not include the one skill that makes the other troll unit, the mountain troll, very useful and worth the slow march. This skill is massive presence, which makes the opposing armies target the tanky troll instead of other higher damage inflicting units, which can be very useful therefore for shielding the army. Therefore the mountain tr troll is often more useful. Lastly, the Ravager is also unbelievably expensive, with the resource cost being almost double that of the already very expensive mountain troll. For these reasons I just don't think the Ravager offers enough and I really think it's probably one of the poorest tier 4 unique units in the game. The unique ring skill of Mordor, however, is one of the best in the game, in my opinion. This skill, called Sauron's Gift, increases your ability points by 20%. When this is coupled with the fact that you can take this ring skill earlier than most other factions, at only ring level 10, it makes it extremely powerful. In early game, the ability to gather more resources than any other faction due to the increased ability points can give you a huge early boost particularly when it comes to developing your keep 
and avoiding those early resource bottlenecks. In late game, the additional points can also allow you to use the Mind Sharpener skill more often, so you can level your commanders faster. Lastly, one little known fact about ability points is that they regenerate from nil to maximum in the same amount of time, regardless of how many points you have in total. Therefore, having more ability points means that each point will regenerate faster, so you'll have more ability points available more often than other factions. This is a huge advantage and helps to make up for one of Mordor's downsides, which will be covered later in the resources section. The location of Mordor is also very strong, particularly in Season 1 and 2. Mordor is tucked into the southeast corner of the map, south of Rune or Variags once they're added in Season 3 plus, and they're east of Gondor. True to the source material, Mordor's lands are extremely difficult for the opponent to access, courtesy of being surrounded by high, inaccessible mountains with only two realistic access points. Both the Black Gate and Minas Morgul are high-powered keeps that are difficult to capture and are bottlenecks that can be easily defended. The other possible access point involves a faction circling the southeast corner of the map, which takes an obscene amount of time to get through all the crossings and also round the mountain ranges. This makes Mordor's resources some of the safest in the game. This safety is harmed somewhat, however, once Variags are introduced between Mordor and Rune after Season 2, as they spawn in the eastern wastes with access to similar areas as Mordor. In addition, Variags is also one of the most popular evil factions. Early keeps are also readily available near Mordor's lands. To the south, both northern and southern Khand are only 160 power and will feature no resistance from other factions. To the southwest, South Athelion and Horondor are also 160 powered, though will likely include some resistance from the nearby faction of Gondor, who sometimes spawn in this area. You then have a number of 600 power keeps such as Nern also sprinkled around, so Mordor can get some strong early momentum. The location compared to Dol Guldur, however, is a negative, with Mordor being the furthest eastern faction away from the ring. The keeps between Mordor and Dol Guldur will also often be picked up by one of Rohan or Gondor, so the conflict on the way to this objective is common and to be expected. The biggest downside to Mordor's region is the resources. The devs have tried to remain consistent with the law, and the lands of Mordor are pretty barren of resources, especially when compared to the rich lands of Lothlorien or Gondor, and grain in particular is very difficult to find, unless you push up to the, sea, uh, the Seas of Rune. This is where the additional gathering and ability points come in handy, but expansion out of the basin in search of resources is always advisable for Mordor. Two notable areas which really hope to cover for Mordor's lack of grain resource is if you either push to the northeast and go to the Seas of Rune, you'll see a large amount of grain is available here, particularly also on the islands. Or alternatively, if you push into South Athelion, the banks of Osgiliath are also extremely grain rich. So both of these are advisable to increase your amount of grain as Mordor. The neutral units available to Mordor are also a strong positive. Once you get around the natural barriers that also keep you pinned into the southeast basin. Firstly, the Fell Beast is a tier 4 unit with fairly mediocre stats except for their exceptional speed, which can make them brilliant for increasing the march speed of your commanders and allowing you to move across the map at great speed. In addition, you also have the Mumakal units, which are available through Southern Kand and Harondor. These extremely expensive units have formidable amounts of HP and can attack all opponent's units simultaneously, so are great with use for commanders who can deal massive commander damage. Lastly, in later seasons, the Great Beasts are also added. These units are strong tanks that can soak up damage whilst also boosting the power of the ranged DPS units. For early game commander levelling, Mordor ranks fairly poorly compared to the other factions. The lack of resource tiles, and also the lack of crossings and tunnels, can make mid game levelling difficult, as does the lack of a weak neutral unit camp to farm. Mid game this can be rectified by the increased ability points allowing for more use of the mind sharpener function, 
and farming of the tier 4 fell beast camps once you have strong tanks and good ranged units. So to summarise, Mordor usually sits top of the tree as far as evil factions go in the earlier seasons, though it's not difficult to see why. Strong early commanders, beginner friendly location and plenty of room for expansion brings the new players in, as does familiarity with the lore. Later seasons however, Mordor tends to be less popular due to players moving on to try other factions and the growth of other powerful evil factions such as Gundabad and the Variags. Anyway, that's everything I have to cover here. If you've enjoyed this, please drop a like and please consider subscribing. I upload regular Rise to War content and I really hope to see you on the next one.